Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy.
Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the desert, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of John. About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning when he has never been taught? Then Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who has sent him is true, and there is nothing false in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you looking for an opportunity to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus answered them, I performed one work, and all of you are astonished. Moses gave you circumcision. It is, of course, not from Moses, but from the patriarchs. And you could circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath in order that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I healed a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, Is not this the man whom they are trying to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, but they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from, but when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, You know me, and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true, and you do not know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. Then they tried to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many in the crowd believed in him and were saying, When the Messiah comes, will he do more signs than this man has done? On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of the Lord. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I fear often that I am going to become one of those people in the very near future who tells people about what things were like back in the day, in my day, 
in my day, this is the way it was. I remember distinctly all those voices that I heard growing up. In my day, we didn't have these fancy things. In my day, we didn't have color televisions. In my day, we didn't have this or that, drive through restaurants, whatever it may be. In my day, when I grew up, we would listen to the radio. That was our primary source for music. We all listened to the same maybe six radio stations growing up. In fact, the teenagers listened to maybe two or three of those growing up in Gulfport, Mississippi. When I was in Tallahassee, my favorite radio station to listen to was the country music station. Part of that was because of the music that I preferred, but the other piece of that was that that particular radio station, like many others, featured a talk program around about noon, generally. And that talk program always told a story, and I loved the stories that I heard on that. It was the first time in my life when I would sit in my car and listen to the radio while I was in the parking lot or in my driveway waiting to hear this completed so that I would know the rest of the story. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. It was Paul Harvey on the radio. And he would tell these stories about moments in time or about extraordinary encounters with people. These small moments that changed and shaped the course of a person's life sometimes change the course of a nation's destiny. I was fascinated by most of the Paul Harvey stories when he would recite to us the rest of the story. I've always been fascinated with story. I've always loved to listen to people's backstory, figure out where they're from, who they are, what it is that moves and motivates and inspires them. But most importantly, I'm interested in knowing the details of what brought someone here. What I wanted to talk to you tonight about is a series that we had tried to do last fall. And as most of you know, things got a little strange last fall at Nativity. And we got a little busy. And we got a little frantic. But we have moved through that time... And I thought, my folks have a little bit of extra time on their hands, some of them, and some of them really need an escape from the rest of their lives. And so we're going to be introducing a video series here at Nativity that's about the rest of the story, the stories you thought you knew, right? Because we all have those stories from the Bible that we think we know really well. We think we know these stories really well. The story of creation, the story of Noah and the ark, the story of the Tower of Babel, the story of Jonah and the whale, the story of Jesus. But we don't know the stories that well. There's always more to find out. There's always more to dig into. There is always more that we can draw out of the Scriptures to teach and to enrich and to inspire us in life. And so we're going to be taking some time over the next several days and weeks and months, probably once a week, we will have one of these videos go up. A simple, short, maybe 15 minute at most instruction about one of the stories that you thought you knew. Maybe it'll be the story of Job. Maybe it'll be Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. We have several that we're working on. And I hope that you will tune in, and I hope that you will enjoy those. I hope you will find them edifying. And I hope that you will come back here again and again for the worship that we'll be doing online, including the service that this sermon is a part of, the service of Evensong. It may be a while before we can gather those folks again to do something else, but we will have opportunities for you to connect to this place that you love, 
to these people whom you adore, to be strengthened by the Christ who has nourished us here and who will bring us back here together again. I hope that you will be inspired by this and that you will be enlightened by the worship. But more importantly, I hope that you will take the time to get to know a little bit more about the stories that we know, the stories that we love, the stories that have moved and shaped who we are. I hope you get to know the rest of the story. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God. Yeah.
Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time and rest in quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior.
and have 